Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day 17 of the Leak Code Daily Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about this problem. I'm going to do a, an extra one today. Hopefully, uh, or it may be premium, it may not be. So definitely hit the subscribe button if you find this one too easy or too hard or whatever. All right, let's go. Today's problem is 926, flip string to monotone increasing. Okay, so you have a binary string. Uh, there's zeros and ones, and you want to... You want to flip it so you can flip S sub I to change it from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0. Okay. And a minimum number of flips to make S monotone increasing. Okay. So you, and this monotone increasing just seems like you want some, some uh, way of saying 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1 to some way, right? Meaning that all the zeros are before the ones. Okay. Um, I mean, I think in this one, uh, the, uh, for these problems, the way that I try to think about it is try to figure out how to do brute force in a smart way. Um, sometimes, or that's, it's not always the case, but some of it is a little bit meta as well in the sense that, you know, I think about a difficulty and, you know, maybe on a contest, if it's a little bit earlier on, I think about how to brute force and then try to figure out, okay, now can I do it in a smarter way, right? So what do I mean here for this particular problem? For this one, the first thing I would try to do is, okay, can we... Um, and you have to be a little bit clever, right? Um, you know, I, I don't. When I say brute force, I don't mean like try to flip every bit and then like two to the end type thing. So I guess you can certainly do that, but uh, or you can certainly think about it. I don't think you could do it, or you know, it's not worth the time to do it. But uh, but you know that it, if you really think about this problem, there really is only, you know, given a string of size n, um, there are only n plus one solutions, right? <clears throat> Uh, and they may not be the minimal solutions, but they're the, the solutions that you want. The first one may be something like one 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 one. Hit caps lock by accident. The next one would be zero one 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 one. I mean, you could also obviously enumerate these in di different directions, but that's basically, you know, <clears throat> dot dot dot, right? And then all the way to zero zero zero, do, 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 right? Something like that, right? Um, so you know that this is going to be one of the solutions because that's just how they define it, right? Those are these are the solutions where you have zeros before ones. Like I said, you can maybe have done it in the other order or something like that. Um, cool. And then now the, the idea after that, oops. <clears throat> the idea about how to that is okay. Now can I figure a way to translate this string into one of these and then so forth, right? Um, and that's really it in a way. Um, and after that becomes implementation. And there are a couple of ways you can do this. One was with prefix string. You can also maybe do, you know, just keeping track of some stuff, um, what I call bookkeeping and making sure that you track everything. Um, okay, so I'm gonna talk about the way that I'm gonna implement it. But like I said, you can do it in probably like a lot of different ways once you get this visualization right and once you have this idea in your head right um and the idea that i'm going to start with is i just go, i'm just going to draw a line behind one uh, between or it doesn't have to be between i suppose but in one place um around the number right so it could be uh, some some number right oops no fours but um so then here this is the what i call the divider say and then the divider, everything to the right of it has to be ones, and then everything to the left of it have to be zeros, right? So then after that, as you kind of go from left to right, um, you can you can do the math based on that, um, I believe. Um, and that's basically what I would start basing this on. So, okay. So let's just say best is you go to n, where n is length of s, because I guess in the worst case, you change all of them. But in that case, you actually have zeros. So, but, yeah. You know, uh, but that's just, you know, as a base case. And then first, mm, we'll say once is equal to s dot count one. And then now for mm, something like this, but let me, let me be more precise about it, right? So I means the i space or i plus one space. So you, you have to define what you mean by what, what this I means. And what I mean by that is that given um, um, a string of N characters, there's going to be actually N plus one space, right? And what I mean by that is that, like, let's say there's three characters, 
very simple. There's one, two, three, four, where you put the divider and everything to the left and everything to the right, like we said, is the invariant, right? Um, so you just have to handle the extra one as long as you're consistent, as long as you know what you're doing, and as long as you're consistent, that's fine. If um, so, it so I'm gonna handle this one first, and then the i will be the i plus one space, right? So how do I handle this divider? Well, everything to the right is ones, so we already have that. That means that, um, and there are n characters to the right, right? So there's gonna be n minus one zeros. So then that and for and you have to flip every zero to one. So that's basically the idea. N minus ones is you know so zeros is equal to this number for obvious reasons, and then best is equal to min of uh, zeros n right or best. Um, and of course, in this case, zeros is just all the numbers to the right that you have to transfer to the number one. So sometimes I think, you know, if you look at someone's code and you see this, you may not immediately. Uh, Ooh, excuse me, immediately know what that means, but hopefully this kind of, you know, the right visualization becomes easier. And then now for I, so now we're moving from here, from this space to this space, and then there are only two cases, right? Meaning the middle is zero or the middle is one. So let's go through it together to um, deliberately. So if S sub I is equal to zero, what does that mean, right? That means that on the right side, we have one fewer zero, right? And then on the left side, we have one more zero. Um, yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, I mean, I think, the, and then you could do the, all, the, all the math that requires. And what that means is that, okay, so the, on the right side, so zeros is equal to n minus i, which is the number of numbers that we processed, minus ones, right? So then these are the, this is the number that we have to um, update on the right side. And then on the left side, well, how many, so on the left side, we want it to be all zeros. So it is the number of ones on the left side, right? Hmm. Do, do I need another variable for this? I guess so. Yeah, I mean, let, let's just do it. Keep it easy. Uh, so zero, right? And then, yeah, so once on the left side, well, that's just the number that you have to change. So then now, um, the numbers, the total number of things that you have to change is zero, the number of zeros on the right side and the number of ones on the left side. So that's basically the idea of a min, right? And then obviously we do update it to min. Else, now S sub i is equal, equal to one, right? So what does that mean? Um, well, that means that there are now one fewer ones on the right side, right? So now, duh, 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 and then once on the left side, we add it to one. Um, yeah. Uh, that's pretty much it. And then we could still, oops, we could still do uh, use this thing and then we could still use this thing. And of course you can take this out. Um, you can also take this out, it seems like. Um, and then you can take this out and then just do this, right? And then now we turn best at the end, as you know, for obvious reasons. And that's maybe pretty much it, unless I ugh, get everything wrong, huh? Uh, do I have no by one or something? Hmm, I have an off by one. <clears throat> Shouldn't be though. Oh, I don't see the how. Zeros. This is on the right side. Yeah. Okay. I mean, let's let's take a look. Um, the good thing is that you know, with a debug, you can kind of you know manually check really quickly, right? Um, in this case, for expected one. I think I agree with that. So yeah, so with on the on the after processing zero, our divider is okay. Let me just write it here so it's easy to see. Um, after processing zero, the number should be here, right? Oops. 
And in this case, there's two to the right side. And so it should be two, but it's giving me three. Why? Hmm. Oh, well, mm, did I mess this up? Do I? I guess that's the part. Oh, it's I minus one because we just removed that one. Whoops. Okay. I, I, I that's the part that I forgot to think about. Or like I, I was, I, I remember having a mental note to be like, okay, Larry, I remember to think about this first. Uh, but then I just kind of, I don't know, I just skipped ahead and then forgot. All right, let's give it a submit. Hopefully this is right, and it is. Uh, 1022, um, this is kind of a long video, but uh, hmm, how did I do last time? Mm, I guess same idea, maybe. I mean, it definitely is the same idea, but I, I don't know how I did it. Um, yeah, and as you can probably guess, this is linear time, constant space, right? We have to go through the array once. We actually go through it twice if you count this one as well. Um, and of course, in space, it's just a bunch of variables. So yeah, um, cool. That's all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. Stay tuned to to do an extra bonus question with me, one that I haven't done before. So yeah, stay good, stay healthy, take good mental health. I'll see you later and take care. Bye-bye.